Hey, it's Anfa. In the previous video, I shown you what Geonkick can do, and I asked if you want to see more videos from me about it, and your answer was a resounding yes. So here we are. Today, I'm going to give you an introduction to Geonkick, a free and open source drum synthesizer currently available for Linux. Let's just jump into the DAW. So as usual, I've created an empty ardor session. I'm going to add a new MIDI track. I call it Geonkick. I selected Gian Kick from the list. Here's the track. Now, in order to be able to do anything, um, or rather preview our sounds, I'm going to enable MIDI input. So I'm going to plug in my MIDI keyboard and toggle the recording, arm the track for recording. Now you can hear the sounds that Gian Kick is making. Okay, let's double click to open the interface. And this is Geonkick. It's a drum synthesizer. It's intended to create percussive sounds. How it works is that it generates a sample and holds it in memory ready for playback. So it's actually a very simple sampler that just happens to synthesize the sample every time you turn a knob. That gives it a big advantage over other synthesizers I used before to make drum sounds. And that it's perfectly consistent between hits. It's very hard to produce perfectly consistent transients with other synthesizers. The, the, envelope, uh, the envelopes work a bit differently at each hit, um, and Gian Kick really gives me the most thump and most punch and the most control over my drum sounds, which is why I started using it for everything since I've discovered it. And it's getting better. And it looks cool. All right, so I'm going to give you an overview of the features. In the middle, we have a big graph with the current sample. Geonkick has three layers. You can see they are here. Layer one is enabled, layer two. With these switches, we switch between layers. So you can see all the layers are the same right now. And right here on the top, we can enable layers. Right now, I enabled layer two and layer three. Because they are exactly the same, they produce the same sine wave, which is bowling on top of the previous one. So let's disable the first two and just let's play the first one. So this is the sine wave we have. Each layer has two oscillators, oscillator one and oscillator two, and a noise source, which is here. Every oscillator also has a filter, and you can tweak the envelopes of all the important parameters using this envelope editor here. So let's select layer one. It is selected and now go to oscillator one. And now we can choose three different parameters. We can choose the amplitude of the oscillator or frequency. Let's choose frequency. Now you can see that the graph changed. We have frequency in Hertz. Uh, we can just get this second point and drag it down and now this is the sound that we have. A very cool thing about this is that you can tell what is the frequency of your oscillator at any given point in time, and GM Kick also gives you a hint what note is that. And this is very useful if you want to tune your kick, for example, to your to root note of your track, which is what I something I started doing because I can do it with GM Kick. It's pretty difficult to do if you don't have this in right in here. You, you have to use an external analyzer plugin and just tune it until it's good. Okay, so you can see the amplitude is a little bit low. I'm gonna bring up the amplitude. So these knobs give me the maximum possible values for the envelopes. If I move the frequency knob, the maximum frequency of the graph goes up. So I'm extending the frequency range of the envelope. And because it doesn't like adjust the points uh, by itself, you have to adjust them accordingly to, you know, um, have a similar result to what you had before. So I usually just ramp it up uh, to like five kilohertz for a kick drum. And so I have a nice click. And uh, then I use the envelope editor to, to create my slope. Now, one might think, oh, why doesn't it have, you know, um, 
Bezier Curve Editor. And I thought, yeah, these are nice, but you don't really need that. Look, can you tell by the waveform that we have some points? And also, what's the problem of double clicking and adding another point and smoothing out the function? And I think it also gives you more control. It's easier to tell what the hell is happening because every single point has its frequency and you know that the interpolation is linear. With you know something like a cubic interpolation or, or a power function interpolation, it, it gets nicer to look at, but does it actually get nicer to, to, to listen to? I don't really hear a difference. And adding just a bunch more points to the graph isn't that much of a problem to me. You can right click to remove points. And double click to create points, of course. Now, I would normally use this for drums, but you can also use it to create some other weird effects. Okay, let's talk about the two oscillators. So we have oscillator 1, oscillator 2. Let's enable oscillator 2. And you can hear we have distortion happening, so I'm going to turn down the volume of oscillator 1. Now, these are added up. So one is on top of another. We can switch the envelope editor to oscillator 2, and now we can edit its amplitude by default, or frequency 2, and... Now we have two voices. Also, you can, you can note that GN Kick cuts off the sound when you release the note. Which is something I think I requested, because... Uh, this way you can, you know, have a bit more control of the performance. It also reacts to velocity, so if I play softly... And also another feature of um, MIDI input is that you can change the pitch of the sound with a recent, uh, in this recent version. It wasn't there before. So this is the default pitch and now the pitch shifting isn't perfect you can hear it produces lots of artifacts also it doesn't resynthesize the sample for different pitches to maintain the length it's only shortening the, the the generated sample which i think is fair because this is really not something you need like you don't want to play melodies with this thing it's a nice thing to have to be able to to play this uh to change the pitch a bit. You can make an 808 and, and play, play a melody right now with it, yes. But it's not really the synthesizer you would want to do it, it with. Um, it's possible, but it's not what it's for. I don't use that too much. Okay, another interesting feature is that we have frequency modulation. You can enable it. And now, oscillator 2 is what we hear. So let's turn up the volume of that. And oscillator 1 actually becomes an operator that modulates oscillators 2 frequency or phase. I'm really not sure which one is it. So you know what? Let's initialize the patch. I'm gonna... So you see we can have frequency modulation, which is... Uh, useful for some effects and also it gets useful when you can you know you can change it the function of the way of the oscillator triangle square saw and a new function a new thing is you can use a sample file let's try that okay so that's a all right. So now I'm just playing a sample for oscillator 2. However, you can see that frequency modulation doesn't work in this context. It's just disabled. So, yeah. So there are some limitations. We also have filters for each oscillator. You know what? I'm going to close this. Delete the plugin. Add it once again, so we have a clean slate. Mm, 
let's see. Let's use a sawtooth. Oscillator 1, frequency. Let's make it. We have a filter. And the cool thing is that it updates the waveform display immediately. And of course, you can edit the filter cutoff dynamically. So if I rise it up, I can make us. This is pretty interesting for various uh, percussive effects like one shot uh, sounds or you know some turnarounds uh, or maybe even risers I haven't tried it for risers and the fun thing is that this uh, this filtered sound is going to actually affect the the oscillator too you can see it changes when I disable the filter. So the filter is applied before the frequency modulation, which is cool because using a filter before frequency modulation, this gives you a lot of interesting options. We can make some really cool sounds which are totally useless as drums. But you know, you can also just go to general or we have general all the way here, so we don't have to. You can change the length of the sample. Interesting. One thing about Geon Kick that is a bit like a missing is that it has, it only produces mono sounds. There is noise source, but it is perfectly mono. Also, I've noticed that sometimes when you go too high with the filter on on the noise, it breaks the waveform. Uh, let's change the oscillator one, oscillator two, noise filter cutoff. It's pretty fun. <laughs> really cool sounds. Really cool sounds. So we have a filter for the noise. There's also a global filter for everything, so we can low pass the entire patch, if you so desire. Now note, it doesn't refresh real time. It only refreshes uh, if you like release the control and play a new note. Sometimes it also takes a, a short while to update the sample under the hood. Anyway, uh, there are some effects also. So we have a compressor. Uh, not sure how it works. I wasn't really able to like tune it up how I think it should work. It does create some distorted sound. <laughs> which is sometimes very useful. Um, I'm not sure if it's broken or maybe I just don't know how to use it. I also use the distortion. Mm, let's disable all the randomness. Oh, this is so cool. So um, we can enable the distortion. And the thing I do is I turn up the volume because it's a post distortion volume. So it's and I don't use drive at all because it, it already drives way too hard. So I go and I 
tune down the general amplitude. And this gives me less pre-gain so that I have actually control over how much distortion I want. It almost sounds like the Striders in Half-Life 2. The Striders... Have you guys heard about Geon Kick? It's really a cool synthesizer, you know? You should like it. it sounds like you. It's just way too high. Maybe if I pitch down the oscillator... Actually... Nah. Because... An oscillator frequency... Oh, it's because it, oh, it's a really fun sounds. But they are not drum sounds. I wonder what, what would happen if we tried to play a melody. Make this makes me wanna record that and resample it. <laughs> that the ending is was really cool. And we just used one layer. There are three layers. You can layer things. So let's disable the first layer. Now it's quiet. Layer two. And we have to change switch here. So in this row below, we choose what parameter are we going to edit. This chooses the layer we want to edit. This chooses the element or the part, uh, the module, if you will, uh, of the layer. And here we have parameters of each module. And also it displays a nice uh, path here. Layer two, oscillator one, cut off envelope, right? Frequency envelope, amplitude envelope. It also shows you the total length of the sample currently, which is of course changed by this knob. There's also a layer mixer, so we can have enabled multiple layers and we can turn down each individually. <laughs> Note that the distortion is applied after that. So it's applied to the master bus inside Geon Kick after all the mixing is done. I must say this distortion sounds pretty cool. With all this stuff. I wish there could be some way to have the noise in stereo or, or something. Um, I think I'm going to make a, make a request on GitHub for this. So we have three layers. Uh, you can switch between them here. You can export your sound as an all sample. Um, by default, it goes with Wave 16-bit. I would personally go with FLAC 24-bit because it takes less space and it gives you more uh, headroom, more fidelity. Not sure why it allows you to export stereo files while the sound itself is, is really mono. But you can render the samples. You can, of course, save your patch. Um, and this is indeed Geonkick 1.9. Now, I've been using this as a plugin. And I've been using it in, in my recent work to make old drums. but it also runs as a standalone program. And it behaves pretty much the same way, but you need to feed MIDI input into it, of course. So this is Geon Kick. It's a very interesting instrument. It's very inspiring. It gives me a lot of control to tune my drum sounds to my liking and, you know, the visual editor of the envelopes with the waveform preview in the back. It's excellent. It's, I think it's a great idea. Uh, of course, this synthesizer didn't invent that, but I think it's good to take inspiration from good sources, and I'm really glad we have this synthesizer available in the free and open source music production ecosystem, because we were missing such a tool for the longest time. 
but it's there. Okay, so now if you're interested and hooked, you want to install GeonKick, how do you do that? Well, it's currently only available for Linux. Basically, you need to go to GeonKick's GitHub page. I'm going to link it in the video description. You go to the releases. And here you can download everything. The source code and a binary package with the program and the plugin itself. So you download that. And inside, there is the standalone version, which is a program you can just run it or put it in your user bin folder, for example, so, so you can run it easy, more easily. And there's the plugin. Now you would have to put this thing into your user lib lv2 directory or some, somewhere else. Your host program usually looks for different things. There is also like a, a, an lv2 folder in your home directory, so you don't have to inst be root to install this plugin. Let's go back to the code and let's see if there are some instructions. Mm, yep. There are instructions of how to install it, how to build it from source. Uh, there is packages in Arch Linux. I'm using this and the package is up to date. It's, it's version 1.9 right now. Uh, oh, there are some shortcuts. This is really cool. Like, you see, we have, there's a complete processing graph. You can like, wow, this is cool. By the way, one day before I fell asleep, I came up with a pun. <gasps> and that pun might spawn an extension of Geonkick. So watch out for that. So that's all I wanted to show you in this video. Uh, stay tuned for actual tutorials on how to make a kick and snare and other sounds with Geonkick. Grab it and experiment. Thanks for watching. I hope you've learned something. And if you have any questions or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. I want to thank uh, everyone who supports my work financially. Uh, if you would like to join them and help keep this show going, please go to patreon.com slash anfa or liberapay.com slash anfa. Now go, make some music with Geonkick.